Good morning, folks. We've got a full slate of news up today from typhoons to deep space, and we're starting in between, as always, with our star. Let's go over to spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on the sun were very quiet, but also that the southern coronal hole begins to explore the central heliographic longitudes. Solar wind streamed from it is on its way to Earth due to arrive over the weekend. But the solar wind this morning is very quiet. Until that coronal hole stream arrives, we're unlikely to see much movement in that telemetry or the KP index. We are all quiet this morning. Meanwhile, we do continue to see the very minor ejecta along the coronal light jets here on Soho. Not only small, but aimed 90 degrees away from Earth. A quick look at Typhoon Vong Phong. It has begun to take on the Philippines, and folks, it's got plans on seeing all the sights they've got to offer. The storm is set to tear right up through the region and not deviate until just before it would slam into Taiwan. Eyes open there. Quick note here on a potential shakeup in auroral physics. Apparently, there are numerous lines of evidence against the existing model of currents only engine at Jupiter, suggesting the magnetic wave energy is playing a significant role as well. But the real Jupiter story today goes to its moon Europa which is now officially the second moon in the solar system with water spewing jets from the surface, the other being Enceladus at Saturn. Interestingly, they used magnetic field data and proton depletion by small particles to discover the jet, which is more or less the same method used to discover the missing electric currents in the Enceladus plume jets. Tess up next, and the planet hunter sure is doing a lot of astrophysics these days, isn't it? First, it was the confirmation of super flaring in sun-like stars, and now it's critical information about a pulsating star. They're able to determine that sound waves banging around inside of the star are causing a pulsation in the brightness, which is a fascinating concept even before you ever begin to ask what causes that or can this happen to other stars. They are saying there are multiple resonance modes that are possible, one of them being this one, but as this is the simplest idealized model, they doubt it. Quick notes on cosmology while we're out here in space. Folks, this is the third or fourth confirmation that the AMS-2 anomaly is not dark matter, so we can confidently put the last existing potential discovery claim to rest. Even at this point, it's a bit more like unplugging the life support than any kind of real battle, after convincing virtually none of the key members of its own field. I want to again, for the second time this week, mention the Sky Scholar channel. Dr. Robitaille's presentation at our yearly conference is one of our top 10 viewed videos ever. His current examination of the cosmic microwave background is also a must watch, and his work on Haruni's antenna is incredible, and so is the science of the scope itself. They have their own YouTube channel, by the way, which is another of today's links, and the woman at the head of it all is indeed scheduled to be at our 2020 conference in Denver, provided they let us have it this August. Both that and Sky Scholar are linked below the video, and now on to our top story, and it's outstanding. By studying some of the early atmospheric radionuclei data concurrent with and flanking the nuclear testing period in the atmosphere decades ago, they were able to notice incredible, nearly unmistakable correlations between those and the rainfall data at a continuous station monitoring from the Shetland Islands north of the UK. 24% rainfall increase and significant cloud thickening. They determined it was the addition of those nuclear particles to the atmospheric electricity that created direct increases in cloud condensation nuclei, as well as increased ambient ionization for the electrostatic attraction of dust and water vapor, which then aided in the rainfall increase. This is critical because it is the exact same mechanism of action for cosmic ray cloud forcing, which has been shown to affect lightning and rain as well. Folks, this is the entirety of chapter five of our book, Clouds, Lightning, Storms, and the Global Atmospheric Electric Circuit. Now, since the pre-order period ended, and the book won't be available to be ordered again for a couple weeks, you can get the next best thing for free here on YouTube. Right below this video in the description box, you can find a link to the Climate Forcing Playlist. It is one of the foundational pillars of this channel. Last little note here. Those who follow us on Facebook know our women's tanks are on sale. Thanks for the shot, Rebecca. To get yours, go to otf.cells.com. You can find our other gear there and our children's books. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. 
eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.